Hello, everybody, and welcome to a tier list of all the monsters in Risk of Rain 2. I'll separate the monsters into three categories, normal, champion, and boss monsters, and inside of those different categories, give each monster a rank and explain the reasonings behind my choice. Note that each rank reflects a given monster's threat level, so there will only be low, mid, and high threat rankings, and not the usual S, A, B, C rank, etc. Also, if you are a newer player, I'll explain the strategies involved with taking down each monster, so you you can also kind of think of this as a guide and not just a tier list. All right, let's begin here with ranking the normal monsters, starting from the bottom here in low tier with beetles, lemurians, and jellyfish. Hold on, remember when I said there were only going to be three ranks to give? Yeah, I'm going to add a fourth rank here real quick. The extra low tier, super low tier. Think squid poglip low tier. While each of these monsters provide little to no danger once you get your first few movement related items, the beetles deserve to be in a separate tier because they are literally a non threat so long as you aren't standing completely still for multiple seconds at a time for some reason. Lemurians can always toss their ranged attack out and smack you for some hefty damage, and the jellyfish can sneak up on you if you're not paying attention, but neither can compare to the beetles. The only way you're going to get hit by a beetle is if you let them hit you. So for beetles, just keep moving and you will never take damage from them. However, one quick thing to mention here is that the Malachite and Celestine elite affixes make any enemy, yes, even the beetles, a top priority threat to deal with. So keep that in mind. Always take out Malachites and Celestine whenever you see them and never get distracted or complacent while doing so because just one seemingly small mistake versus a Malachite bomb or an invisible Elder Lemurian inside of the Celestine will spell the end of your run. For taking out the low threats of the Jellyfish and Lemurians, just keep moving and make sure to tag any Jellyfish that come near you as that will almost always stop them in their tracks and even interrupt them mid-explosion. They have such a small HP pool, meaning anything more than your survivor's primary attack will be enough damage to stagger them and render them useless. Otherwise, just let your various AoE effects take out the Jellyfish and Lemurians and focus on the higher threat targets instead. Moving up here to the mid tier, we have Imps, Soulless Probes, Hermit Crabs, and Mini Mushrooms. Imps, despite being purely melee, can be quite dangerous if they are left unchecked. They're extremely mobile and can catch up with you in an instant and smack you with their double hit attack, which inflicts a small bleed as well. Toss in an overloading or blazing affix, and the Imps can easily chunk your HP bar in a flash. So keep them at a distance and kite them in circles and always be wary of them coming up to gank you from behind. The Solus probes don't dish out a ton of damage, rather they can come in large numbers and have a very consistent attack. They essentially fire a tiny stone titan laser beam all the time, so if you do not take care of them fast enough, their consistent firepower will eventually overwhelm you. Luckily, they also have a tiny HP pool, and this makes them very susceptible to your AoE effects, so once you take one of them out, the rest should explode shortly thereafter. Hermit crabs and mini mushrooms share a similar story. Both have a long range artillery shot that deals significant damage if it lands on you. So, as you may have guessed, the best way to deal with them is to keep moving and eliminate them as soon as you can. Of course, only after the highest threat enemies have been neutralized first. Speaking of the highest threats, these are the Lesser Wisps and Alloy Vultures. At pretty much any point in a run, if you see a Wisp or a Vulture, you take them out immediately. Now, there are some other enemy types that are overall more dangerous. However, due to the low HP of these two, you should prioritize the Wisp and Vultures above everything. Yes, even the Teleporter Boss. Similar to the other regular monsters we discussed, the Vultures and Wisps have a pretty low health pool and thus don't require much effort to take down, but what separates these two from the rest is the danger of their attacks. Vultures hit like trucks and Wisps do moderate damage but fire essentially hit scan rounds, meaning their shots never miss, and they come in huge numbers, which means they both need to be taken care of as soon as you see them. Note that the Vultures fire their shots according to where you were, not where you currently are, so never backtrack when fighting them. Keep kiting in the same direction and do not stop for a second or else you will get hit. If you're struggling on monsoon difficulty in general due to the sheer number of monsters spawning, the reason is almost always because you're not prioritizing the right monsters to kill first, and an easy fix would be to start taking down lesser wisps and vultures as soon as you see them. Moving on here to the champion monsters. Starting here in the low tier, we have just the bison. Bison are like the beetles of the champion monsters. Now, a bison is much more of a threat than a beetle, but relative to the other champions, bison are actually quite easy to deal with. If you get caught by their charge, 
charge, you can say goodbye to a chunk of your health, but avoiding the charge is trivial if you're playing a survivor with mobility skills or you have just a single hopu feather or wax quail. Otherwise, just kite them around in circles and always keep an ear out for the start of their charge and just deal with them after the other action dies down. For the mid-tier champions, we have Beetle Guards, Greater Wisps, Parents, Golems, and Void Reavers. Each of these champions have a very hard-hitting attack that becomes extremely dangerous if coming from an elite version of the monster. So the name of the game is Dodge Until You Can Kill. I put them all here in mid-tier because the danger of their attacks is not as high as, well, the high threat monsters. The Beetle Guard's Sunder moves pretty slow across the ground and can be jumped over or strafed. The Greater Wisps shots are very predictable and really only a threat if they catch you off guard. Parents are just huge in general and it's easy to say, hey, maybe I should stay away from that massive hulking dude over there. Golem's beams are trained on you well before they fire and can be dodged if strafed in a circle, except when they randomly snap their aim to you at the last second. And finally, the Void Reaver's explosion is super easy to predict because it only happens after they're already dead. So if you remember to not get up and go get your pizza rolls out of the toaster oven the exact millisecond that you kill a Void Reaver, then you should be good to go. Now, you may have picked up on a shared theme when dealing with the various threat levels here, which is pretty much keep moving and kill them before they kill you. It sounds like a simple and obvious rule, and well, that's because it is. If you're struggling with any of the monsters I have mentioned and will mention, you're either not moving enough or not killing the right things first. It's as simple as that. How well you understand this rule is pushed to the max when you deal with the final tier of champion monsters, the high threats, which are Brass Contraptions, Clay Templars, and Elder Lemurians. Contraptions hit absurdly hard. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if their attacks are the strongest non-boss one in the game. So if you get hit, it's safe to assume that your HP bar will be blinking red, if not totally gone. So how do you avoid getting hit? You guessed it. Kill them before they kill you and make sure to keep moving. Wow. Huge surprise. All right. All right. There is an actual strategy when fighting any number of contraptions. Simply move around them in a clockwise direction. That's it. If you always move to the left, their shots will never, and I do mean never, hit you. Now, you can't always guarantee that you're moving to the left relative to every contraption on your screen because the groups can be spread out quite a bit. But if you keep moving clockwise relative to the largest cluster, the other contraptions should eventually fall into the whole group and then be able to be avoided entirely. If you thought contraptions were annoying to fight, oh boy, look who's coming up next. Clay Templars. Their miniguns seemingly target you across the map and have the smallest spread known to man, meaning your only option if you're under their fire is to either get behind cover and line of sight them so that they stop firing, or get as close as you possibly can, as quickly as you possibly can, to also get them to stop firing. If you can't do either one of those things, then you need to run around in a circle like a madman and kill them as fast as humanly possible or else you will die, period. Finally, the Elder the Murians. These boys shoot a spread of ranged fireballs if you're too far away, breathe scorching streams of fire on you if you're too close and also move at the speed of light to come chase you down. Also, did I mention that they're literal ninjas and will be behind you the second you turn away? Yeah, that's Elder Lemurians in a nutshell. Keep as much distance as you can between yourself and the Lemurians and just step between or jump over the fireballs whenever they're headed for you and that should be enough. We have come now to the final category of enemies, bosses. I'm actually going to separate the bosses here into regular and special categories because the Aloe Worship Unit, Aurelia Knight, and Twisted Scavengers are only accessible by performing a specific action in a run and will otherwise not be seen. Starting here with the lowest threat bosses we have- okay, wait, hold on again. I gotta do it again. Beetle Queens, I'm sorry, but you are relegated again to the extra low tier. Beetle Queens are the- Ah, take a deep breath and relax, boss fight. Whenever you see them spawn from the teleporter, you know you have as much time as you could possibly want to take care of any and every threat before you move on to the Beetle Queen. There's not much strategy involved aside from keep moving, and as long as you pay attention to their acid spit and don't stand the little beetle wasp looking debuff thingies for too long, you'll be perfectly fine. So let's go up to the low tier with magma and overloading worms and the soulless control units. Both of the worms are essentially the same, with the only difference being the lightning orbs from the overloading worm instead of fireballs. Otherwise, they are essentially the same monster, just with the overloading having more HP and damage. The best thing to do is just track the worms at all times, especially when they go underground, and be ready to avoid the chomp in their mouth at a moment's notice when they come back up. If you keep a distance and pay attention, worms provide little to no threat themselves, and are really just a big distraction for the other monsters to come and take you out. Solus control units are little baby versions of the alloy worship unit secret boss, and, well, they don't do much. You may be like me and have PTSD from the pre-nerf alloy. <sighs> 
So your heart may skip a beat or two when you hear the plasma barrage charging up, but I can assure you that the world spawn version of the big orb boss is a non-threat. Keep a distance and be ready to avoid their ground pound attack that launches you in the air once their HP gets low enough, and that's really all there is to them. Next, the mid-threat bosses are the Clay Dune Striders, Grove Tendies, Imp Overlords, Stone Titans, and Wandering Vagrants. Each of these bosses are fairly easy to deal with alone, but once you get multiple of them spawning the second loop and beyond, they could become quite a threat. With the Dune Striders, be sure to avoid their heat-seeking balls at all costs, which those are the ones that they fire while they're standing up. And speaking of standing up, try to get their HP to just above the big suck threshold and then save all of your damage for when they stand up next. That way you will completely bypass the big suck if you manage to kill them while they're airborne. Otherwise, if they do the big suck, just run away, break the tether and kill everything but the Dune Strider. That way they'll just stand right back up due to not having any targets to suck. The Grove Tendies aren't too dangerous with their own attacks, but rather if you don't have a lot of AOE, the little pink wisps that they spawn will overwhelm you quickly and are a major issue to deal with. So be sure to stay near a wall, pillar, or other piece of terrain for when they spawn the wisps, so that way you can quickly line of sight the wisp and let them harmlessly slam into the wall instead of you. Imp Overlords are probably the most dangerous out of the mid-threat bunch due to their high mobility and very fast attacks. Avoiding their bleed spikes is basically the same process as dealing with the Elder Lemurian Fireballs. Just keep a distance and either strafe between them or jump over them. However, do not strafe in a circle, but rather run directly towards the Imp Overlord once they throw the spikes, as more often than not, those spikes will just fly over your head and not actually hit you. The Stone Titans and the Vagrants are pretty easy to deal with due to their attacks being clearly telegraphed, so just keep some terrain close by and retreat behind it during a Titan Laser or a Vagrant Explosion to negate their damage. Finally, the High Threat Bosses, or just Boss rather, the Scavengers. I mean, nothing can compare to an enemy that gets access to items. Think about the power of your survivor if you didn't have any items, relative to when you get some crit, on hits, AoE, yeah, that's what the scavengers are all about. Their power was toned down a bit by not being able to have ceremonial daggers anymore, but they are still a force to be reckoned with when they get Tesla coils, ATG missile launchers, disposable missile launchers, prion accumulators, teddy bears, clovers, you get the picture. Your absolute best bet is to observe them from a distance because thankfully their aggro range is pretty small and take a look at their items and equipment before you engage. If you see anything overtly dangerous, consider skipping them entirely unless you have a lot of damage and can take them out before they start scavenging for more loot. Otherwise, it's just a classic case of kill or be killed with the scavengers. The special bosses are different from the rest, again, in that they require a specific action to be accessed. You're never going to encounter them at the same time, and thus they don't really require ranks. However, if I had to compare them, then I would say Aurelianite is the easiest, as he's just a souped up stone titan. The alloy worship unit is medium difficulty due to having to wait for his shields to go down like 15 times during the fight, which can make it drag on for seemingly ever. And finally, the twisted scavengers are the hardest to deal with because they're scavengers. With the Artifacts 2.0 update, the Twisted Scavengers were buffed heavily. Think of the pre-nerf alloy and multiply that by a butt ton and you now have the power of the post-Artifacts update Twisted Scavengers. They are nutty. Do not pick up a Beads of Fealty lest you have nothing short of a god run on your hands because by making the smallest mistake in the fight, you will die instantly. And that does it with the tier list and guide of all monsters in Risk of Rain 2. Do you have differing thoughts on what I've said here? Let me know with a like or dislike on the video and a comment below. You can check out my stream at twitch.tv slash woollygaming and consider joining our Discord server as well. Thank you for watching and boys, the full release of Risk of Rain 2 is coming up way faster than it looks.